name is Annalene and usually I make videos on this channel about fashion, lifestyle, books, but also sometimes Taylor Swift. And today I'm going to be making a sweater vest. I've already finished one of the panels. This is like the front of it. And then I'm going to be making the back of it in a different color. This is one of the free patterns on Rivular. And I just really love the color combination. I think it's going to be looking really good. Um, I did make a few changes to the pattern. Um, the pattern is usually a little bit longer, but I want it to have like a cropped sweater vest because I usually just wear high-waisted things. So I wanted to make it easy for me and not have to tuck it in every time I wear it. So yeah, um, I went to buy some more yarn yesterday and I spent this perfect cream color that I think looks really good with this like dark red. We are getting into it. I mean, I've already started with the back panel. I've started the ribbing on the bottom. This is like this bit. And um, we're just going to get into it. Um, we're just going to keep going. I need, I think 48 of these rows and I have about 15. I should probably count them again to make sure, but I'll count them when I'm a little bit closer to finishing like 48 rows. So sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy this vlog of my small sweater vest, reversible sweater vest. listened to the new Avril Lavigne album this morning. It's called Love Sucks and it's really good. <laughs> um, it, it is, you know, just classic pop punk. It just took me back to the 2000s and I really enjoy it. I have been like, ever since Olivia Rodrigo released um, Good For You, I was like, hmm, is pop punk going to be having a comeback? And yes, it is. I'm very happy about that. I think my favorite songs so far on the album are the title track, Love Sucks, and also I really like Boys Lie <laughs> with Machine Gun Kelly, and I also really like Deja Vu. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good album. I've listened to it twice this morning. I'm definitely going to be listening to it more in the future. Um, so if you haven't listened to it and you like, you know, just like, early Panic at the Disco or like All Time Low or just Avril Lavigne like probably more like her second album um, then then you will also like Love Sucks I'm sure I'm kind of contemplating on you know buying concert tickets because she's doing a tour but I'm not sure when she will be in Belgium yeah I might I might go and see her because I really like the new album and I also like a lot of her older stuff um, I was a huge Avril Lavigne fan as a kid, <laughs> so her first album came out in 2002, so I was six then, <laughs> so I was six then, um, so it took me a, a while to, to kind of appreciate, I think I've, I've, like my peak loving Avril Lavigne was like when I was 12, and then I mainly listened to the first album because we had that on CD. I still have it around here somewhere. And then like she released Goodbye Lullaby, I think in like 2011 or something. So then I was like 15, I guess. And so I started listening to her albums again and I kind of had like a second, a second, a second era of, of loving Avril Lavigne. <laughs> And then in 2020, or I think maybe late 2019, she released Head Above Water, and I listened to it a couple times, but I wasn't, you know, there, there are some good tracks on it, but I don't particularly love it. I also never really listened to her self-titled album, you know, just in between Head Above Water and Goodbye Lullaby. kind of made me want to like wear 
my black baggy jeans with a tank top and a tie. <laughs> I ultimately decided against it. I did see her perform live once in Brussels. I had seen that in like the kids newspaper that we got, there was like a little article saying that she would be performing that evening in Brussels. And so my dad was like, oh, do you want to go? Um, and I'm like, sure. It was a free concert. I don't really remember why it happened. Um, she had a set list of six songs and she was like an hour late <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so we stood outside for, for quite a while because it was just an outside con concert. I think it was definitely when I was still in elementary school. So I probably was like, 10 or 11 or 12, something like that. Also, the pattern that I'm using is free to use on Ribbler. And Ribbler is this app that I really enjoy where you can just find patterns and they have like interactive patterns. So you can mark off what sets you've done. You can change the measuring system from inches to centimeters, which I think is really useful. Um, you can change the language if you want to. You can, uh, there's video tutorials, you know, there's like, it's really useful, um, especially if you're a beginner like me and it makes everything a lot easier actually. Um, I have been looking for secondhand yarn for a while and I've been to a few secondhand shops, but I never could find like a color that I think would look nice with the burgundy that was also, you know, enough yarn. Um, because I usually would just find one or two balls of yarn of the same color, but I, I, I needed three at least. So that um, wasn't very useful. Um, and so yesterday I, I kind of gave up. <laughs> I bought the yarn new, um, but I did make sure to only buy like organic yarn. So there's no plastics in this yarn. This is just 100% cotton, um, which I'm very happy about because you know I know that like the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries, and I know that you know we all need to do our best, but I can only do so much like I could also just not crochet I guess but we need our little pleasures in life don't we so I think I think this is probably the best I could do also the thing with trying to be sustainable is you can only do so much like I can find secondhand yarn but usually you don't really know what it's made of so I'm pretty sure that the yarn that I use for the front is like acrylic yarn or, or something like that um, but you know, if I didn't, if I didn't do anything with it, then it would just lay there and we would just postpone the pollution, I guess. Um, it was going to happen anyway, so I might just make a garment with it and really enjoy wearing it and take good care of it. If you want to know more about that i discovered this channel on youtube it's called go gently and it's by bonnie wright she plays Ginny in harry potter and she is such a lovely human <laughs> she definitely cares a lot about sustainability and she recently made a closet cleanup video and just the way that she talks about sustainability and fashion is really you know, it's really nice she has some good tips and it's a really relaxing video <laughs> so I, I i encourage you to watch it i will definitely link it somewhere in the description it did take me a, a while to get used to this yarn because it consists of lots of different strands and sometimes I mess up and I don't really 
you know, and I get stuck in one of the strands or, or something like that. And it's it took me a while to get used to, but now that I'm a few rows further, it actually is really nice wool and it has like a little bit of a stretch to it. And this was actually like the color that I had in mind because I knew this was going to be a reversible sweater vest. Um, and I was thinking like, okay, so we have burgundy. I didn't want to, I didn't want to add a color that was too bold. I probably would have gone for black or this cream color, but I felt like black would be a little bit too dark. And I only own one cream sweater, so I figured that that would be like the best combination. And I really like the way that the colors turned out. I think they look really nice together. I really enjoyed making my last crochet vlog. I will link it up here. Um, I made a hat, <laughs> a winter hat, and I really enjoyed just like crocheting and talking to you about whatever. Um, there was not a lot of pressure to, to say something meaningful or, you know, not stumble over my words. I, I just crocheted and talked about whatever I felt like and I, I just I just really like it. I also like watching this type of video a lot, um, just hearing people share their thoughts about anything that comes to mind. And you know, maybe you'll find that I have the same interests as you or that I might change your mind about something or things like that. Or you might just listen to a new album and and realize that you really love it. <laughs> I would love that if you if you go on to listen to Love Sucks by Avril Lavigne, let me know what you thought of it because, you know, I, I think more people should listen to it. I don't think that it's making a big splash, I would say. I think it's just kind of under the radar right now, even though, of course, Avril Lavigne is massive. Um, she, yeah, I think she could, I, I think she could use a lot of love. crocheted for a while and the garment is just like flat <laughs> because at the beginning like your yarn tends to like twist and it just looks a little bit awkward but then when you when you crochet for a while you've added some rows it usually becomes really nice and flat and you can it's like it's like a piece of fabric you know it's like actual fabric and it's so satisfying <laughs> few weeks later and this is where I'm at right now. So I'm about halfway done with the second panel and then once this is finished then I will sew the two panels together and also add some ribbing like this one um, to the sleeves and the v-neck. So I'm excited to get going. Um, what I didn't take into account is that I need to use my Ribbler app to figure out where I am in my pattern and I can only use my phone for that at the moment. Um, so we'll keep going. If I'm correct, then this is probably the last of the reductions that I still have to do because I have to diminish the width of the um, panel. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I believe that I only need to finish this row and then I'll be done. I can, I can maybe like put this one next to the other panel so that I can see if I've done enough rows. I had to start over a few times because this yarn that I bought is a little bit thinner than the yarn that I used for the front piece or the back piece. So if I used the same hook size, I had to make a few more stitches to get the same length of, of you know, row. So uh, I had to change things up a little bit. I had to buy some new hooks, 
which I'm very happy with. Um, now I'm currently using a five millimeter hook, I believe, yes, for just like the main part. And then this bit, this ribbing was four and a half. And let me just show you my crochet hook because I was so happy about that. So I was planning on buying all of these plain hooks that are just like, you know, regular metal, but for the size 4.5, they were out of stock. So I went ahead and bought this one. And I love this handle. It's so comfortable. It's so comfy. It's so comfortable and useful. It's a charm to work with. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of sad that I only had to do this ribbing part with this, with this hook, but I'm excited to use it again once I'm doing the ribbing for the sleeves. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy about that. As you might be able to tell, I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment. I, I don't like it. Because <laughs> um, I feel like I, I just had COVID at the beginning of February and I was hoping that I would, you know, stay healthy for a little bit longer. Um, the good thing is that I know that it's not COVID or at least it's not very likely to be COVID. <laughs> um, it's probably just a cold. I went to see a play yesterday and usually I don't like plays. <laughs> I just, I find it very hard to concentrate while I'm watching a play because I have a very hard time picturing things in my head. Um, so for example, when I'm reading a novel, I have a very hard time picturing what the characters look like, what the room looks like, or, you know, just descriptions of things are very difficult for me because it, it takes a lot of energy to just picture something in my brain. I also have a very hard time recognizing people because of this, which is called facial blindness. I do have a, a, a you know, I, I do tend to not recognize people um, until I've met them like a good three or four times, then I will remember them probably, but um, then I will probably only recognize them when they're in front of me and I probably won't be able to picture them in my head, be like, oh yeah, that's what she looks like. But when they're in front of me, I'll be like, oh yes. That's her. <laughs> Why is this important when watching a play? Usually, in my experience, it's not always the case, but most of the plays that I've seen require you to picture things as you watch them. Usually, like, the staging is really bare bones, you know, you just have, like, the black of the stage and there might be, like, a chair or a table and maybe a lamp and then it is implied that the scenes change, for example, but they don't really. Um, also, most of the plays that I've watched are amateur plays or student plays. And you know, when you're, when you're a student and these were like people that I knew and I knew like they, these people are my age and they were portraying like a 50 year old or or maybe a 15 year old and, and just, I, I couldn't get past it, you know? It was just, the suspension of disbelief was just not achievable for me because of that because I, I just saw 20 somethings pretending to be 50 and their acting might have been phenomenal. I would just, I, I just couldn't see them as like a 50 year old, right? That's really difficult for me. Um, but that's why I like the play that I watched yesterday. The, the students, it was a student play again, but they were actually portraying students. <laughs> so it was really easy for me to watch. I, I could process it very easily. And I also liked the staging. Um, they were just at a student residence, I guess, um, where, you know, there was mess on the floor and there was just one sofa one chair a, a radio it was it was very bare bones but it was enough for me to picture or, or to know instinctively that it was a student apartment and like the walls were these um slingers 
I can't really think of the English name at the moment, but that was actually really nice. It, it was it was very pretty, and it wasn't just the black of of a typical stage. So, so I was I was very pleasant pleasantly surprised about that that I that it didn't take me like so much energy to just figure out what's actually in front of me or or what they were pertaining to me. I also really like the characters. They were very fun, they were interesting. They all had a different backstory. This play, by the way, was directed by two of my friends and I might be a little bit biased, but on the other hand, this is genuine praise. <laughs> and everything I'm saying, I'm saying with full sincerity and I think that even if someone else had made the play, I would have enjoyed it just as much. They both know that I upload videos and they might see this video one day. Although I don't think they will. I don't think that they will watch this. <laughs> if you're watching this, you know who you are. Send me a message and I will buy you a drink next time we go out. <laughs> it was actually also very funny. I, I genuinely laughed out loud multiple times. It was, uh, yeah, it was a good time. So I'm, I'm very proud of my two friends. And after this, I lost my voice. Um, it still hasn't really returned, so I... Uh... I stopped talking in this video. I was hoping that by today I would have regained my voice, but alas, we're here and this is my voice. And uh, I'm not happy about it, but <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that was, that's what happens when you get ill sometimes. So I finished a sweater vest and in the original pattern, we had to add some ribbing to the neckline and also the sleeves. But uh, once I tried on my version without the ribbon, I loved it so much that I decided to just leave it that way. I, at first I considered just trying it out and seeing what it looked like, and then if I liked it more without the ribbon then I could always just take it off again, but I, I was so excited about it that I kept it this way and then I also knew that I could just instantly wear it and get this video finished in time as well. So. Here I am just sewing the two sides together and I will show you what it looks like in a moment. This is what it looks like right now, and I think it looks really cute. I think the length is perfect. that I could wear this sweater vest with. I love all of them. I truly do. And I'm sure that I can make more outfits as well. Just uh, mixing and matching with different items that I still have lying around. <laughs> a very fun project. I hope you liked both 
the garments that I made as well as this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and I hope that I will see you next week have a good day bye